Yo, what is up guys? Staleboy here, aka Blue Collar Sports TV. Hopefully you guys are doing well. If you're new here, smash that like, hit subscribe, all of that good stuff. So, some breaking news. Connor Ben has been cleared in his UCAD case. Uh, of course, he uh, failed a drug test. Well, actually, two tests uh, prior to the Chris Eubank Jr. fight that was scheduled for October of 2022. Ever since then, there's been a big hoopla in regards to what's going to happen, investigations, changes in testimonies in regards to how this substance got into Conor Ben's system. Uh, one minute it was a contamination, then it was eggs, then it was this, then it was that. It's been a whole big circus, the whole, the whole situation has been a media circus. Um, but finally, we have some uh, resolution on this case, and the final resolution is Conor Ben is cleared to fight. Um, and according to Matchroom, according to Eddie Hearn, Conor Ben is looking at returning in September, followed by a big, big fight in December. And the names for the December fight, a couple of names that have been mentioned, are Kel Brook, which I have no interest in, just more grave digging from Conor Ben, and Josh Taylor, which is a fight I'd like to see. In fact, following Josh Taylor's loss to Teofimo Lopez, I said that's the fight that makes the most sense for Josh Taylor. Because ultimately, it's a big domestic fight, it's going to generate a lot of interest, and it's somewhat winnable, I would say, for Josh Taylor. I know Taylor looked terrible in his last two fights, but... You know, maybe fighting at welterweight would be benef would be beneficial for him. You know, not having to cut down to 140. And ultimately, Conor Ben is still very unproven at welterweight. So, to me, that fight would make a lot of sense for both Josh Taylor and Conor Ben, uh, to be honest. Because I see Josh Taylor as a guy who has seen his best days already. I don't, I don't see Josh Taylor doing much at 147. Could I see him beating a Terence Crawford, Errol Spence? No. Even a guy like Jerron Ennis? No. But Conor Ben is still very unproven, so it makes sense. It's a domestic fight. I would like to see it personally. In regards to the ruling, uh, my position is quite simple. I don't really care. Um, you guys know my thoughts on drugs in boxing. I think it should all be done away with in regards to drug testing. Just let these guys do what they want at this point in time. Mutual consent. If somebody doesn't like it, they can retire. Leave it at that. I could give a fuck anymore. I, I, I could really give a fuck less. Years and years and years ago, I used to have the normie perspective on drugs in boxing and uh, PEDs, you know, saying PED cheats should be banned. But, you know, the, the more I've kind of looked into the situation, uh, the more I realise that it's one rule for one, one rule for another. If you're in the boxing establishment's good graces, you're going to get a lot more leeway in regards to such situations. Whereas if you're a dangerous guy who's a B-side who could mess, mess things up, then more than likely uh, the system isn't going to be as kind to you, you know? So the whole drugs in boxing thing, it's a big sham, it's a shambles, it's a complete crock of shit. I never want to hear Eddie Hearn talk about VADA again in the UK. Because again, this situation really exposed weaponized drug testing in boxing. And it really showed how drug testing is used many times by A-side fighters to add another element of control in these fights. Again, you, you just have to look at patterns, right? When it's a dangerous B-side who tests positive, it's a much bigger deal. There's bans, there's this, there's that, there's the other. When it's an A-side, you know, it's a completely different circumstance, isn't it? Completely different circumstance. When Ortiz popped against Wilder, the fight gets called off. When Povetkin tests positive against Wilder, the fight gets called off, despite Povetkin, by the way, being found innocent, so-called. But when it comes to A-side fighters, the punishments are far less severe. It's just basic pattern recognition. 
Um, I, I see both sides of the equation getting very loud about this ruling. Conor Ben fans up in arms saying he's innocent, he's innocent. You must apologise, it was an innocent mistake. T totally ignoring the complete physique change, things of that nature. The guy's, listen, the guy's dirty as hell. It is what it is. Um, and the other side are, are crying that Conor Ben's allowed to fight. I mean, listen, imagine, imagine taking drug testing seriously in boxing in 2023. Again, it's, a, it's about pattern recognition. There are so many cases of, of failed tests in boxing and just analyze them. See what you find. Look at certain situations. See what you find. Um, come on, man. Things can't always be spelt out to you and, and spoon-fed. You have to come to your own conclusions in regards to drug testing in boxing. And for me, drug testing in boxing is a sham. It's been a sham. It's always been a sham. And it's weaponized by prominent fighters to gain an advantage on their opponents. Just that simple. Hence why I don't support it anymore. Years ago, like I said, I did, uh, when I had that normie kind of viewpoint, but the way I see it, let all these guys juice. It's mutual consent. If they don't like it, retire, don't box. Simple. That's it. That's it. Oh, but there's gonna be more deaths. Well, you say that, that's just an opinion. Show me the studies that support that. Not your opinion, show me the studies. Pride MMA uh, is a good example. Many people hold Pride MMA to be the best MMA promotion of all time. Those guys could do what they wanted. In the contracts it said, we do not test for steroids. And was there any deaths in Pride? You tell me. You tell me. It's, it's more fair when it's a level playing field. It's more fair when it's a level playing field. Then people are going to say, well, certain fighters have more money. They can get better gear. Well, that's, that's the same in every regards. You know, certain fighters who don't have a good amateur background who turn pro, many of these guys are working full-time as well as training. They can't train as much, etc. That's not a fair playing field either. You know, certain guys can get with better trainers than others. That's not a fair playing field either. You know... It is what it is. Let these guys juice. Let these guys do what they do. And we'll see what happens. That's, that's how I see it at this point in time. But regardless, Conor Ben is free to fight. And I want to see him fight Josh Taylor in December. If the schedule is to be believed, he'll have a comeback fight in September. And yeah, in December, I want to see a Josh Taylor fight. I want to see a Josh Taylor fight and I'll be looking forward to it if it happens. That's how I see it. Share your thoughts below. Beanie Guy Delboy. Peace.